Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have an early impression video. So after doing a long video yesterday, two plus hours on uh, the aldehyde note. So we ranked, this is uh, not a top 10 aldehydes. And today I just wanted to do a shorter video and we're going to do an early impression. And this is going to be the first time I've given this a full wear, but it's from the House of Zoologist and it's called Rhinoceros. So this is actually the, what they call Rhinoceros 2020 or version number two. If you look on the back, you can actually see that they've got version two written right here. And so the original Rhinoceros came out in 2014. There are differences with the notes. So we're going to talk about that. But before we do, we're going to do an unboxing. And this is a special unboxing because it's from a fellow Fraghead. This is from uh, Bry. So thank you, Bry. It's good to, uh, you know, it's good to, I like buying stuff off of people in the community. I'd much rather, uh, you know, the, the money go to someone I know than to some corporation, uh, number one. And number two, he was very fair. He gave me mates rates uh, and threw in even a free bottle. So we will... We'll see what's in here along with some samples. So let me tell you what he sent me too. I've got some samples now to talk about from the house of Celine, which is a house I've never talked about on the channel because I've never smelled anything from Celine. I know that Eugene really rates the brand highly. Uh, I know that my buddy Rich Mitch does not. And so this will be really interesting to, to see my thoughts, but we've got uh, Celine. Uh, this is La Pou, nu La Pou Nuit. Celine La Peau Nuit. Are you guys familiar with this? I am not, actually. I have never smelled a Celine as long as I have lived. Uh, this would be the very first time I've explored the, I've explored the brand, which is kind of cool. Uh, but I've heard that they share a common theme. You know, they are owned by LVMH. And if you actually take a look at the samples, they look very similar to the samples that... Garillons come in. Look at this. Look, look at the similarity. What is going on with my camera? Is there like a smudge on there? Or am I losing my mind? Hang on. Is it better or worse? I can't tell. Um, but look at the similarities there. I don't know how I feel about that. That is damn similar. Damn, damn similar. I think, I mean, I understand trying to save money and all this stuff, but God, you know, even the texture, the texture on the box is only slightly different. It's like, you know, they picked it out of a catalog. Look, Guerlain got this texture and, you know, Celine got this one. Can you kind of see the difference in texture? But it's so minute and so small. Even the font is similar. I don't know how I feel about that. Anyways, enough of me bitching about LVMH. It is what it is. They're not going to change. Uh, that's just how they are. They're they're about that money. They're about that dollar, and that's that. So, so these are two mil samples. I mean, this is more than enough where I can wear this as my scent of the day one day. La Peau Nuit is rose absolute, oris butter, rice powder, vetiver, and bergamot. Probably better in the warmer. I would think these Celines are probably better in the warmer weather. But, um, so that's one. And then he was also kind enough to send me Bois Dormant. Bois Dormant. Sorry, some Frenchman's ears somewhere are bleeding profusely from hearing me try to pronounce this. So I do apologize. But, uh, let's see. Bois Dormant. Again. Almost a full two mils, more than enough to wear uh, as a scent of the day. Bois d'Armont is, what is Bois d'Armont? I don't know anything about these. Do you guys know these? Are you excited about hearing me talk about these? Or are you just kind of like, eh? Is it a brand that you rate highly? Bois d'Armont. 2022. Ah, this is one of their new releases. Woody Spicy. Bergamot, juniper, orris butter, cedar, and vetiver. Uh, interesting. They don't list perfumers for this brand, interestingly enough. Um, 
So no perfumer listed, which is a shame. I wish they would. And then there is black tie. Oh, this is one I'm kind of excited to try. This is one that was kind of hyped for a little bit there. Black tie. Um, yeah, this is this was a hype beast for a little while. I remember a lot of people talking about this black tie. So excited, excited to get to try that. Black tie. 2019, Oris Butter, Cedar, Tree Moss, Vanilla, and Musk. I guess that Oris Butter is like a repeating theme, eh? That's what it seems like to me. St. Germain Dupre. St. Germain Dupre, what are you? What are you, St. Germain Dupre? Um, St. Germain Dupre. St. Germain 2019 release. Uh, Neroli, Petit Grand, Oris Butter, Heliotrope, and Vanilla. I have to think these smell all smell kind of similar. I mean, the note listings all seem the same. And Eau de California. Eau de California is the last one. Um, and I think this one is also a newer release. I remember Eugene talking about it, I think this year even. Uh, Eau de California. 2019. No, it was a couple years ago. Uh, Woody Fresh Palo Santo Wood with tree moss, patchouli, bergamot, and that oris butter. Again, I guess the whole line kind of revolves around this oris butter is what it seems like. They all have oris butter and most of them... Yeah, Oris Butter seems to be the, the theme throughout all of them. So that'll be interesting. Interesting to, to try. Okay, let me show you what I got from Bry. And let's start with the backup because I regretted um, not buying a 200 mil of this whenever it came out. And Bry mentioned that he bought this a couple years, like a year and a half ago. And I was like, sold. Because I wanted a... Uh, I wanted a bottle early on. I didn't want one of the newer bottles. I was a little bit worried about things changing. Um, and this is Chanel's Le Leon. Okay, so I have a backup. So I'm very excited. I have a 75 mil. Now I have another 75 mil. So I don't have to worry about running out of Le Leon. I love this. I love Le Leon. Uh, I think it's probably one of the best releases uh, of the year that it came out. When did Le Leon come out? A couple years ago? Le Leon uh, 2020. Yeah, I think it was probably the best release of 2020. And um, lemon, bergamot, labdanum, bourbon, vanilla, sandalwood, and patchouli. But I think one of the best smoky, resinous, labdanum scents I've ever put my hands on, my nose on. My hands on too. Uh, and, you know, I trust Bry, so it's easy for me to, you know, pull the trigger on something like this. Chanel's are very hard to find on the secondary market, number one. Number two, they're one of the most faked brands. So you have to be very careful when buying Chanel's. I would either buy my Chanel's, um, you know, directly from Chanel.com or from someone I really trust. Uh, if it wasn't someone I trusted, I, I wouldn't pull the trigger. And so, uh, Le Leon to me is a masterpiece. I know it's either a love or hate for some people, but I absolutely love it. But I also love Shalimar, and I know it's kind of this take on Shalimar. So I've got now multiple bottles of Shalimar and multiple bottles of Le Leon. So I am stoked. Now let's get to the 200 mil. There's a 200 mil Chanel in here. And this fragrance came about... The reason that this came about, okay, is that um, I love these Chanel bottles, man. They are perfect. They are just perfect. Um, the reason this came about is um, I had sample tested uh, Eugene's new fragrance, Bellam. Eugene from the from the brand Les Abstraits. Beautiful iris, okay? But before I tested Bellam, 
um, Rachel sent me some samples. She actually sent me samples like six or seven months ago. It had been a while. And one of those samples was 31 root cambone. And here's the 200 mil of 31 root cambone. This is the eau de parfum. I had a decision to make. Go for the eau de, vintage eau de toilette and pay double or triple the price or just get the eau de parfum. And I decided to get the eau de parfum. I thought this was one of the most gorgeous Irish fragrances I ever smelled. Ever. Uh, I, I just think it's so posh and so beautiful. And, you know, there is something uh, between that iris and rose and that bergamot with the cystus again labdanum and patchouli that just you know the green peppery touches with the posh iris just really speak to me and um good magnet that's good stuff i'm a fan um and you know bry gave me a very good very fair deal on this so i am stoked to add 31 rue cambone to the collection this is posh perfume this is elegant i mean you could wear this anywhere i honestly feel like you could wear this anywhere and in texas i mean this is a nine month out of the year fragrance for me probably wouldn't wear this in winter as much because i think that green those green touches in 31 rue cambone would just work beautifully in the warmer weather but Yes, 31 Rue Cambone. So, two Chanel's added to the collection. A backup and a new addition. And I'm stoked. Very stoked to add those to the collection. And then, he was like, I know you're a vintage guy. I'm going to throw this in for free because I just won't wear it, okay? And I was like, yeah, sure, go on. I mean, hell, uh, I've got a bottle of this already. But I feel like you can never have enough of this juice. This is extremely sought after juice. And uh, this is a Cosmere version of the original Polo. How about that? Look at this. Um, fuck that smell, man. Fuck, man. It is so good. I've got a... Um, I have a uh, Warner bottle of Polo right here. Look at this. Look at this little bad boy. Look at the difference in atomizers between the Warner and the Cosmere. So I have a Cosmere of this. So now I have a, a backup Cosmere bottle and I am stoked. Very stoked. I mean, these this is the way to go. Uh, Cosmere or Warner are the ones that I would urge you to get if you're a fan. So thank you, Bri. Thank you for your consideration, my friend. Uh, that was very, very kind of you. And uh, I promise you the RAM will put these to good use. Okay, so let's talk about why many of you joined the video to hear about this zoologist. And let me just do a fresh spray. You know what? Um, there is... There are some fragrances that seem to have all of the makings of an amazing fragrance. And this is one such fragrance, right? So listen to the blurb, listen to the note listing, and tell me if it doesn't seem like something I would absolutely love. Uh, so, and this is the 2020 version. So here's the little blurb. Rhinoceros. Uh, perfumer is Prin Lamros. Under the searing gaze of an unrelenting sun, the ornery rhinoceros surveys his dusty territory. A tough, battered hide in it is his armor against the erosive onslaught of sand whipped into a frenzy by a hot, merciless wind as he stands strong, defending his domain. 
On the first spray of zoologist rhinoceros, heady notes of sweet rum and whiskey collide with mellow coffee before the scent settles into its lingering journey. Rich leather, oud, and incense are carried in a cloud of smoky red tobacco along a dusty, ambery path dotted with hints of patchouli and moss. Rhinoceros is a sophisticated and robust scent that makes a bold, unapologetic statement. Go forth and explore your world. Don't ask for permission. Okay, uh, so, and look at the picture. Look at the rhinoceros bottle amongst the tobacco and amongst the whiskey and amongst the, you know, rum and all that good stuff. My kind of scent. 100% it should be, and, and the note listing is pink pepper, whiskey, coffee, rum, basil, leather, frankincense, tobacco, absolute, sweet vernal grass. I guess sweet vernal grass is also known as flauv. I don't, I don't know. Uh, ylang ylang, uh, laotian oud, patchouli, nagamatha oil, or cipriol, which I love, oak moss, and amber. And... You know, when when you look back at the 2014 version, you will notice there are some differences. So I am really interested in sniffing out the 2014 version one day because it was supposedly uh, a it was supposedly more leathery and smoky, and it had a couple notes missing from this one. Uh, so there was lavender in the 2014 version. There was Elemy Resin, there was Sage, Mugwort, and um, Pine, and Immortelle, and Geranium, and Chinese Cedar, and Vetiver, and Smoke, all missing. All of those notes are missing. Um, there was also Sandalwood in the 2014 version, missing from, the, from this one. So it's almost like it's a completely different fragrance. Although it tries to do the same thing, it seems to be different, okay? And um, when you first spray this fragrance, uh, at least the version that I have, and it says right here, version 2, 2020, okay? So when you first spray, it opens up with this um, boozy tobacco just like you would expect it to, just like the marketing expects it to, just like you would expect it to smell from reading the notes, except there's this unmistakable green accord. And the green accord, if you looked at the note listing, would say basil, uh, but it almost comes across smelling of ivy, all right? So it comes across smelling of like this um, green ivy, uh, <laughs> You know, what came to mind since it's rhinoceros is mushed lettuce. You ever been to, you ever been to like the zoo and they've got like decaying lettuce lying around the animals' cages, you know, like the turtle cages and rhinoceros cages and all this stuff. And um, the lettuce just kind of sits there in the sun and it just, you know, it just sits there in the dirt for hours and hours. And then maybe an animal comes and eats some of it and leaves some of it. And it's like half chewed and that kind of vibe, that green grassy they say sweet vernal grass here. I can't say I know exactly what sweet vernal grass is, but it seems like that's a good shout as to how this would smell. It has this um, spicy, almost um, almost half chewed mush lettuce smell with grass. With grass. So when you when you take the whiskey rum. Slight bit of coffee. I don't get very much. Only a little bit of coffee. Just a, just a hint, okay? Mostly it's the whiskey and the rum. <clears throat> With that green, that green basil and um, sweet vernal grass is my guess. Um, if, if sweet vernal grass does not smell like grass, let's say you have like a lettuce note or some sort of, you know, um, mushed green note in there. Let's say you've got trampled grass by the rhinoceros, because it's a rhino. Rhinos like to dig, they're big, they step on stuff, they're heavy, um, you know, that kind of vibe. It's 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 it really does have like a territorial rhinoceros type feel, strangely enough. And um, you know, it it does seem to change in the first couple minutes. So when you first spray like I did, you're really gonna get 
hit with that greenness that kind of, I think, will throw you off. Spicy greenness. And I've smelled this type of DNA from Prin Lom Ross before. If you smelled other fragrances from him, you won't be surprised at the opening, okay? And I can't say I'm the biggest fan of the way that he kind of blends spices and oud and that kind of stuff. Because there is this oud accord here. Um, now, if I could isolate some bits and pieces from this fragrance that I really like, I like the whiskey, I like the rum, I do, I like boozy fragrances to an extent, I like the coffee, although I wish it was more, I like the leather, I like the frankincense, and I like the tobacco, and it seems like this frankincense dry down is kind of what you get as the fragrance you know, devolves into its base notes. Um, this ambery, patchouli, frankincense type thing is what you end up getting. Uh, and the fragrance gives off this, it gives off this celebratory vibe. It, 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 it gives off this celebration. I mean, look at all the notes that you would have on like New Year's Eve or something. Rum and whiskey and coffee and tobacco absolute. This one has Tobacco Absolute. The 2014 version just had tobacco, okay? And um, the ouds are different as well. It just lists regular oud in Rhinoceros 2014. Uh, this one says Laotian oud. I don't know what the differences are. If anyone has smelled the difference between Rhinoceros 2014 and Rhinoceros 2020, I would love to know your thoughts on, you know, the differences and which one's better. Um, and yet... Even with all that, uh, there is a little bit of a floral touch that yellowy banana-like ylang lang will come through. And it's a much needed, um, you know, you can't just have tobacco, 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 whiskey, whiskey, whiskey. There has to be some sort of offsetting. You know, there has to be a, a yin to the yang, right? And the and ylang lang actually plays a really good role of that. Um, it plays a good balancing role. It plays a good you know, um, keep everything in tune, in tune with the, uh, you know, in, in tune with keeping everything straight up and down and, and keeping everything balanced. Uh, and you know, I don't, there's something, so here's what I was thinking while I was wearing this all day. I was thinking that there is every single ingredient of a masterpiece for me in this fragrance. There's leather, which is my favorite note. There's oud, which I love. There's frankincense, smokiness. I love smoke. There's tobacco, which is one of my favorite cold weather notes to wear. There's whiskey and rum, which I love boozy fragrances. Some people don't. I do. There's coffee, which is one of my favorite like X-Factor wild card notes. There's greenness in the top, which gives it this throwback vibe. Um, there's oak moss in the base. There's nagamatha, which is one of my favorite ingredients. There's patchouli, which I love patchouli. And yet, something is missing. There's something that is, um, there's something in this that, uh, kind of puts me off a little bit is really the best way I can describe it. So when you first spray, and not even when you first spray, but probably the first third of the fragrance um the first 30 percent of the life of the fragrance is uh a little bit cumbersome it's bob it bothers me a bit it's almost like smelling a rhinoceros in an enclosed zoo it really has that feel like you're smelling the habitat of the rhinoceros um and you know that habitat feeling of the rhinoceros i would say is off-putting and I don't know what it is to be honest with you I don't know if it's the oud I don't know if it's um some spices that you know Prin Lamros used that did not get listed because I know if you look at some of his fragrances his fragrances are nowhere near as clean cut this is a very clean note listing for Prin Lamros extremely clean most of his stuff has 50 notes and they're all crazy goat hair tincture and skunk accord and you know, and there's a little bit of that here. There's a little bit of that craziness here. Um, there, there, there is. It's, it, it feels like there's other animalic bits and pieces on the top not listed. And normally I love animalics, but since you mentioned this, since I mentioned this ivy green 
le mushed lettuce like a cord uh, with oud, there is something that's just off putting about this. I don't enjoy it for whatever reason. I, I got almost no joy out of wearing this. And that's why I'm willing to give the 2014 version a chance. I, um, but the 2020 version would be a no go for me. And what's crazy is after three or four hours of wearing it, once it really devolved, once it, you know, once all the, um, once the first half of the fragrance, um, you know, once it kind of falls away and it loses its steam, it loses the spicy whiskey, rum, you know, tobacco-y vibe, and it kind of gets down to the base, I really start kind of appreciating the fragrance, but why should I wait three and four hours to get to something, you know, to get to a part of the fragrance where I enjoy it. I shouldn't, there, there should be nobody that has to wait four hours to get to a fragrance part that they enjoy, right? And even the base, it's like, okay, it's not bad, but I don't love it. So this fragrance is kind of an anomaly for me because when I first got the uh, sample set, actually, this wasn't part of the sample set. The sample set that I got was five, 10 ml decants, which I plan on wearing more of these very soon. Um, but Victor Wong kindly sent me three of these. One was squid, which I haven't smelled yet. I'm waiting on squid. I'm waiting for it to be warm again next year. Um, and then another was civet. And the last one was rhinoceros. This is the one that I thought I would like the most. Turns out I like civet more than this. Uh, if you made me pick a bottle so far out of the you know, two from the sample set that I've smelled, I would pick Civet over this, hands down. Uh, but but what's interesting is this seems like it would be more my taste, whiskey and rum and coffee and leather and tobacco, but something is missing. That's all I can say. And that's why I'm so interested in the 2014 version. Although maybe I should just let it go. You know, maybe it's just not a, not a fragrance for me and, you know, move on. But, um, Yes, Rhinoceros is, it's not that it's a bad fragrance, I'm not saying it's bad at all, I'm just saying that it has all the components of greatness and it doesn't click. You know, it's like a team with all these great players and they don't come together, they don't play together, they don't, um, you know, they have no harmony, they have, they have no mojo together, they're all kind of doing their own thing and they're not a good team because of it. That's the way that the ingredients in Rhinoceros feel to me, so... Uh, it's a shame because I had such high expectations for this, but um, alas, I'm very glad to get to try it. Thank you, Victor, for sending this to me. Um, many more zoologists to talk about, and I'm very excited to get to talk about these right here. You know, these are uh, camel and sacred scarab and, and Tyrannosaurus rex, and I actually wore bee to bed the other night, and it's very nice. Again, I wouldn't buy a bottle, but it is nice, so... Many more zoologists to talk about on the channel, but let me know what your thoughts are on Rhinoceros. Let me know if you kind of feel the same way or if it's a fragrance you love. Um, you know, I'd love to hear your thoughts if you know the differences between the 2014 version and the 2020 versions. Um, so anyways, that's my quick video on Rhinoceros and my unboxing on my two new Chanel's, which I'm very happy to have. 31 Rue Cambeau and a backup of Le Leon and um, my polo, my polo green. Uh, thanks, Bri. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Cheers, guys, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye now.